Hi, it's season three, episode 18 of the Top Hotspur Family Podcast. Um, welcome to all our listeners and a happy new year to everybody who listens to the show. Joining me this week, John Steggles. Happy new everybody, happy new year. And David Fornell. And a happy new year from me too. Happy new year to you both. Right, um, so we've we played two games over the festive period. Let's let's begin, let's go back a few days and let's begin with Southampton, Southampton away. Um the first, okay, the main thing is we, we won the match 4 1, convincing. Um, the first 20 minutes, I've got to say, 20, 25 minutes or whatever it was before um, Delhi got off the score sheet, um, I thought that was really agonising and painful to watch. And I thought that we, obviously, we conceded a very, a, a very early goal. Um, but after that, I just felt that they were pressing us and we couldn't get the ball out of the back. We were trying to play it out of the back um, once again and I was really really frustrated um, and then when De- when Deli Ali scored um, we just yeah we, we just took it from there and, and particularly in the second half we were much much better obviously it helped that we had a an extra man advantage but um, I thought it was it was signs of the Tottenham of old no David you're, you're first okay. No, I was going to say that um, any time down at Southampton at the moment, they're, they're playing well, and you've just gone down there and won 4-1. Take it every time. But you're right. That first 20 minutes, they pressed and pressed us, done their homework. We looked nervous. The goal was, well, it was such an easy header for Van Dijk. Uh, I, it was barely, I think it was Dyer, wasn't it? It was underneath him and didn't really get to him. Um, and, and we were very nervous for some while but we were coming back into it we were settling and I always felt that Southampton were going to run out of steam which they duly did but we got just got stronger once we settled and, and stopped the panicking um, we were fine and, and we grew into the game um, and then by the end of it yep they got a man sent off um, but what can you do you can um, as I would say about today's game you can only play what's put in front of you it's not our fault um, they've got 10 men but um, we'll take that a lovely 4-1 win. I was very happy at the end of it. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, yeah, comments the first 20 minutes. We weren't at the races at all. Um, well, I was trying to sort out my stream and I refreshed Twitter and I saw we were 1-0 down. I thought, that's got to be a mistake. But unfortunately, I thought after that and our goal against the run of the play, I thought it was all us, really. We dominated them, including before the sending off. Uh, we looked static. I thought it was easier when Southampton came at us. It was all a bit too slow. We love to play the ball up to the in front of the the box, and then it's just moved sideways rather than having that penetrating pass going through. Um, we need that some pace, and the way we play with the the the, the fullbacks with Rose and Walker, we have that pace on the wings. And I'm not sure if we need more pace in the side or something through the middle that will unlock the defences just a little bit quicker. It. Um, um, we against Southampton. Did, did we remind me? Cause it's, it's a few days and and um, and it's Christmas and I'm not at work and everything feels a bit bit disoriented. Did we we played with the back three. Oh, well, n- yes, we did. I think so and, it was for uh, um, Tongan. We had the Tongan and Dyer in midfield with Wanyama dropping back when Rose and yeah. Walker were bombing forwards. Yeah, yeah. I think that. One of the noticeable things the last few matches um, against, obviously we'll, we'll talk about today a bit later, um, but also against, um, who is it we played middle of the week a few weeks ago, Hull City, um, Southampton. We are, we, the, the full backs are really getting forwards. We're really getting a lot of width from, from them. I think earlier, earlier on in the season when we were going through that spell where we were drawing a lot of matches and not entirely convincing, even when, for example, when, when we beat West Ham, we were really lacking width. Now, I don't expect the width to come from Lamella, Eriksen, et al, because 
they're not wingers. They all they tend to like to come in, and we don't have a winger in the conventional sense, uh, uh, like an uh, Aaron Lennon, for example. Um, but f the noticeable thing is that we're either playing with a back three or we're, pl we're having somebody drop off from midfield into the into the back two, and and then it becomes a three, and the full backs really pushing forwards, um, and that, that was definitely a noticeable feature. Last few games, um, Rose in particular, towards the end of the match, there was a passage of play. I don't know if you recall it, but what the I think the four, I think it was the fourth goal when he sort of came inside, and he laid it on for um, for Deli Ali. Yeah, that was when he he left one of their players yeah. on the floor, that little cut inside. Mm -hmm. um, that was glorious. He, he he's becoming Gareth Bale. <laughs> coming through the middle he he really is um but i, I thought just skipping forward to today the mm. width provided by trippier with the his final ball crossing is what we, we if walker could do that every time we'd have have more goals but i can't see us dipping into the transfer window in the new year for a winger i can't I really can't we, we don't need it so okay before before we talk, talk about Today's game. Just, just very quickly, interesting. You should mention Trippier and, and today. Question for both of you. Um, you mentioned his crossing, John, and and I, and I think it's fair to say that his crossing is better than better than Walker, and particularly he, he gets that ball in early. Um, I don't know, David, whether you'd agree with that. But but my question is, for me, I think overall, I think um, despite the crossing, I think Walker is by far. Um, the, the, the better player overall, um, but you've got um, the fact that Trippier can can cross very well, and we saw examples of that today. Um, Walker's back for the Chelsea match, back from suspension. Would you start with Walker, or would you persist with Trippier? Oh, with Walker, I doubt it. Especially against Chelsea, uh, he's stronger. Um, he reminds me of his namesake, Des Walker, who used to play for Notts uh, Forest. Yeah. He has that pace, and and it always gets him out of, well, I say always, nearly always gets him out of trouble. Trippier hasn't got that, and I'm not sure Trippier's going to have that um, a chance to get the crosses in uh, that he did have today. I mean, he was perfect for today. It was like it was written that Walker should go and have a rest and allow Trippier to have the game. It worked perfectly today, um, but against Chelsea, no. Absolutely Walker. I mean, he, he, he covers around the back, scampering. Um, he, he always looks confident if someone's knocked the ball past him or the ball's played inside him. You, you see on his face, he just looks a little bit over his shoulder to see where the player is to see how much pace he needs to put in because he doesn't always run at nine, uh, 100%. He's sometimes a little bit at 95% and just to get in front and cause trouble um, and, and shield it. So, yeah, Walker for me, absolutely. I don't think I'd have any fear playing either of them, to be fair, but I'd put Walker in. Mm -hmm. Trippier proves that he's a, he's a player and he's good defensively and good going forward, but Walker is the number one choice in that position for us, I think. So I think Poch goes with him. T today, um, just looking at the formation and, and the personnel um, and c comparing that with 12, almost 12 months ago when we played Watford last away, away from home. Um, on that occasion, um, the back f five, if you want to call it that, was pretty much the same. Bar we had, so last season we, we played Larissa in goal. He went with wing backs of Rose and Trippier on that occasion. Um, same today, or, or, although... Uh, he had to go with Trippier because Walker was suspended, as, as we said. And then he went that day with a back three of Alderweireld, um, Dyer, and Vertonghen. Obviously, Vimmer came in for the suspended Vertonghen. Um, the rest of the team was pretty much the same. The exception was that last year we had Lamella. Um, we've got a question about him a bit later. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss that in a bit. Um, Lamella is obviously still injured. Um, I think. Dembele last season started the game, but was in came off injured. Um, Tom Carroll, we've sort of forgotten about him, um, and he he played in that game last year. Um, I think, yeah, this year it was Wanyama coming in for Dembele and and Son um, playing. Um, who obviously famously came came off the bench that that game last last year and scored. Um, anyway, I, I digress. Um, the, the formation today, yeah, back, back three again, um, and the full backs once again were, were just 
you know, top of their game, really, really pressing up high up, high up the field. In fact, I know it was Watford, and I know that Watford played. They played. They played as, as though they all had a hangover, and they just um, were celebrating New, New Year's Eve a little bit too much. Um, they they re- weren't. I don't want to say they were poor. They just seemed like they were. They just weren't there. I think it, it was too easy as Watford tried to push on to try and get something or anything from the game, really. But it shows, talking about poor teams, how much of a dearth of quality is in the rest of the league. I mean, you know, Swansea, Burnley, Watford, we, we've taken them to the cleaners, really. Mm. And, you know, we're looking at teams that are ninth downwards, which is more than half the league. Cal City as well. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's... It, there's not that much quality in the rest of the league. We need to keep these performances up and bring it to the, the, the teams above us, really. You know, the, the the form in the league and the way it's going, Man United won five in a row and are still in sixth place. We've just got to keep turning out and churning these wins and get in, trying to get some results against Chelsea Wednesday and the other teams. Um, but yet there are some very poor teams in the league, unfortunately, this season. And it says a lot when... West Brom, who we when we played with them, I was being negative about because they're anti-football. Are actually looking now like a quite a, one of the better sides in the rest of the league. Unfortunately, mm. they know how to get they know how to get results, and at, at the end of the day, mm. it's, it's a results industry. Um, D- David, question for you: um, Watching it, I was watching it on Sky, and um, the, the, the you know, both Graham Souness and Jamie Carragher, um, I think it was Alan Smith on the, on the commentary, you know, we, we were suggesting that this was, was a poor Watford team, which okay it was, but that can't we can't take any, anything away from from our players and the performance that, that they put in because yes, it might have been a poor Watford team, but we could have just as easily turned up and been poor ourselves and scraped a one nil win or a two nil win. I, I think we 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 put in a very convincing performance. Yeah, it's very disingenuous, really. But I can understand they're paid pundits, and what they could see first and foremost was some abysmal defending. But the last game that Watford played, they started very slowly, and I, I think um, we went straight back to our very high pressing. It reminded me of the Man City game. We were right sprinted in uh, on their um, backs and, and goalkeeper to make sure. I mean, Gomez is a very undecided goalkeeper, isn't he? He's a great shot stopper. But um, he's a, a very poor goalkeeper making decisions whether he should come out or not. Uh, and that proved again today. But, um, yeah, I always go back to that same old term. I'm sorry, it's a, a usual one. But you can only beat the team that's put in front of you. We put them under that pressure. We made sure they played badly. And we, we should be given a, a recognition for that. And when we did press them and, and did cause them to make mistakes, boy, did we punish them. And we punished them really well. There was some lovely passing going on today. Um, we had two thirds of the possession again. Um, I know possession doesn't win necessarily win games, but um, it certainly if you can keep that possession in their half, you don't concede. And it's just a shame that last one mm. um, just rather spoilt the show a little bit. Four 0 would have looked lovely, but you know I'm happy with four one. I'd, I'd take that all day long. Yeah, they weren't they weren't uh, particularly um, recognising the Spurs. Um, uh, good play in, in amongst all those goals. It, they were just looking at the poor defending, and it was. I mean, it, it, you can't get away from that. But we did. We pressed them into it, and you could see them panicking. I think they all, in their own minds, I'm, I'm sure they they were not looking forward to today. Um, they knew they were going to be under the cosh. They know Spurs have. I, I don't know. I've seen the stats at all, but I would imagine Spurs pretty much have, have more possession than any other team in the Premiership this season. Um, we do have a high. I think we, we've got the record now, didn't we, against Swansea? Yeah. That was that was an all-time record for the Premiership for the amount of possession in one game. So yeah, we would well. I think that um, at times today, I mean, again, I know it comes back to the opposition, but I think at times to, today it felt as though it's a bit of a statement, but it felt as though we were playing total fo- football in the sense that you know you you had. Never mind the wing backs. You had Dyer and you had um, even Vimmer pushing really forward and um, pressing high up. And and I think at one point Dyer broke into the box um, and players dr- dropping back. Obviously, one one the armour um, and providing cover 
when he needed to. It looked very fluid at times. Um, the other impressive thing I thought was Kane and Ali, not just today, but the Southampton match. They've, they've scored... Sc- Sc- Delhi scored a couple a couple against Southampton can have a couple today Kane scored two today one against Southampton um, and some of the play the interchange between those two was, was very impre- impressive um, in fact just before we scored there was a, a few points where there was lots of short passes quick very incisive um, and we were, it looked as though you could just see it was going to happen I think there was um, Delhi shot which hit, hit the crossbar um, Ericsson too Ericsson was very lively um, and I yeah think... I thought he had played well Ericsson did well today I'd agree with that yes definitely um, you know don't forget we're now copying Chelsea's back three um, Watford played the same system today but very very badly mm. you know um, we, the effective attacking football are we now ripping off Chelsea in that as well? No, because they, we, we, we did that 12 months ago against Watford. Yeah, th- th- this is it. You know, the, the, the media claptrap that they come out with and, you know, they, they, they want to sell a story. They want to sell you a league in a certain picture. And, you know, they're desperate for, for Spurs not to do well. You know, the, the, the bias from the presenters. I thought Souness would have had more better things to say about us because he tends to stick up for us I mean even uh, Jenis on Twitter was saying you know can, can nobody say a good thing about how well Spurs are playing it's all it's all um, how poorly Watford were playing and that's quite grating um, but no one likes us we don't care no it doesn't really matter does it no. thing, a couple of little things I'd like to, to just drop in actually Wimmer who came in seamlessly again yeah. brilliant yes. Never made any mistakes. Looked comfortable. Looked um, very confident. So uh, well done him. Um, I thought an interesting thing today was um, we had a shot which um, hit Kapue's hand, which was high in the air, and he did smack his hand. I know he held his face. Uh, <laughs> that's no penalty. I looked at it and I thought, well, it was pretty close. It could have gone either way. It was handball. But then a few minutes later, Trippier um, handballed it. It was smacked into him out in the middle of the field, handball was given and given a free kick. And I thought, well, that's, that's, that's flaming good, isn't it? Didn't get the penalty, but anywhere in the middle of the field, it just shows the inconsistency again of, of some of these rules and how they're applied. But um, we could have easily got something there. Yeah, I, uh, my take on that is I've seen them given. Um, personally, I think, um, I don't think it was deliberate and, and where is a player supposed to put his hands in a situation like that? I, I, I don't think it was deliberate, but I've seen them given. But unfortunately, this particularly this season, there seems to be lots of poor refereeing decisions, um, which I think I, that it's just to... it's just inconsistency. That's yeah. all. I mean, it just I, I sort of agreed with it. They didn't get the penalty. I thought, well, I'd have been pretty cheesed off if that was a Spurs defender um, just trying to shut down and catches his hand like that. But it hit. Um, Trippier right in the midriff and then just flicked the outside of his hand and I thought oh crikey you gave that you didn't then give her the penalty just inconsistent but the other good thing about the day I don't think we had a yellow card did we nope no no so that was I, I, really in benefit we were who was it was there was a couple of players if they'd have been booked would have missed the Chelsea game so it was important mm-hmm. I remember last year there was Dyer walking the tightrope for a couple of games and he would have picked up a suspension if he'd have got another card and he and uh, he sailed through and didn't pick any up. So, you know, we can keep our heads when needed, which is nice. I guess it was a blessing in disguise, Walker and um, the Tongan getting um, the yellow cards that they got on, on, on Wednesday against Southampton and being suspe- suspended for this match rather than Chelsea. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Just, just on the full-backs. Now, I can't remember. I, I think I had a conversation... Um, it might have been John, John with you at the Swansea match. Um, we watched that game together, or it might have been a few months before that, because at the Leicester City game, I was um, sat next to you, David. Um, yep. And um, or it might have been with neither of you. Anyway, um, <laughs> the point is this: our fullbacks. I've been going on about our fullbacks and, and how good they are, particularly Danny, Danny Rose. And I, and I earlier, on an earlier pod or pods, I've, I've described Rose as a. English Roberto Carlos and and Carl Walker as an English Cafu. Um, I tell you who they also remind me of, and who Tottenham we could 
not in the way we play, but you could draw comparisons. Um, France, around about 98, 2000, France 98 and also Euro 2000. Their back four, as it was, they had um, Lisa Rizou and, Lili- and Lili- Lilian Taram, who actually was who played, for, I think, centre back for, for Juventus at the time, but played as a fullback. I think I think Carl Walker, and that team didn't really have any width because because in the midfield they had Deschamps, who would be the um, Cantona famously described him as a water carrier, um, I think, and, and just said that that's all he could do. Um, but he he did a job for them, and they had obviously the flair of Zidane as well and Jochaef, um, which I think is probably the the one area where we've been lacking a bit this season. Or we're starting, although last few games we're starting to see Ericsson and Deli Ali hit form, and we've still got Lamella to come back. Um, but they didn't have any. That team didn't have any wingers as such. Um, and a lot of the width was from these two world-class fullbacks, and I think that we, that in, in the way we play, um, we don't have any natural wingers, um, and I think that Rose and Taram are, are our Lisa Rizou. Sorry, did I say Rose and Taram? Rose and Walker are our Lisa Rizou and and um, Taram. Um, I think they're. they're they are that good. I mean, we, we're never going to have a Zidane, but we've got Ericsson and we've got Ali, like you say, Lamella, wherever he is, mm. and it's going on with him. And there is a question about where he, where he is at the moment. And to be fair, we're missing him. Um, I, uh... Well, okay, let's 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 just jump to that question. Um... So Terry Whitty asks, "What's happened to Lamella? First injured, then a family problem. Now injured again. We need him back." Um, as I understood it, he is back in the country now, um, and I think he is training. He's just not. He's not. Um, well, I was he's... reading up today, and it does. It, it's suggesting there that he, he's uh, going to be back by um, the 14th of January, which is the West Brom game. Okay, that's not too bad. Yeah. So, and it, it's a groin area hip groin area um it all seems to be linked so whether that's true i don't know but um two weeks off so hopefully would you both would you both agree that i mean obviously of late we, we started we you know we've won four matches on spin but um he's he was missing before that um when we had our run after the man city game and we were drawing a lot of matches um would you both both say we, we've missed him oh yeah certainly he he adds so much to the side. He's he's uh, almost like a whirling dervish, a Tasmanian devil in that midfield. He 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 will run and run and run and put his foot in, and the players pick up and can play from what he disturbs in the other teams. I think there was a lot of people saying, oh, when going back, the price tag, his form, etc., etc. But I think he's proved himself to be vital to the side, and when he plays. It takes us up a, a notch. Yeah, it's very difficult to. This is all about opinions now, and, and what might have been and might not have been. But my gut instinct is that we miss him uh, quite a bit, especially when Ericsson wasn't firing at all cylinders. Mm. Uh, Lamella comes in. He is expensive. He does give the ball away, but he does do some unusual things. And if they come off, um, he's a very creative player. But not only good passing but he can start dribbling and running with the ball um, and, and he's very dangerous and I think that what he does do when he comes on besides the hard work because you no, know, he defends very well he's one of the best he puts in a lot of hard yards but once he starts running he does pull more, more than one defender towards him um, and, and of course like sorry to mention someone like Thierry Henry but he was a great exponent of that where you knew once that guy was on the ball you know he had to be trucked he was trouble and he would pull three defenders but all he had to do was pass it back inside and the other team were down uh, on numbers um, and that's what Lamella can do you know play it out to him and if he looks as though he's going to run he starts to pull him in uh, a little pass and uh, we're away we've got someone spare then mm. so I, I, I think we miss him great we'll see when he comes back it's, it's just my opinion um, I know some people I see on social media I don't think we miss him that much um, and at a game like today we didn't uh, miss him too much yeah. I think it, it, it will you know as long as we continue winning um, 
we, we won't miss him as much, but it will be good good to have that option when he comes back. Um, for me, what he what he does is better than anybody else in our team. Um, it's um, his, the way he he closes down opponents and and he epitomises what Pochettino's philosophy of, of um, high press and and closing down opponents. And I, and I think nobody does that better than 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 Lamella. He's a, he's a little terrier. Um, he's not. Li- he's not little. He's a terrier. Um, I don't know why I said little. Um, he's also. It's interesting you mentioned about him giving the ball away, um, which is true. Um, but there's a reason why he does that because he, he takes those risks in the in the final third. Firstly, he tends to give it give, when he does give the ball away. It tends to be in the final third, and I'd rather somebody give the ball away there than, um, for example, um, further down the pitch at, at the back. But but he takes risks. He 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 will try to look for that pass he'll try to look for that opening rather than do the simple you know pass it backwards pass it back pass it across that sort of thing he, he, he won't go for the the easy option he will try to be creative and try to find that opening and more often than not it, it will it will come off occasionally it won't and and it means that we lose the ball and that's when fans start to groan and get on his back I, I, one interesting thing about Lamella, I can't remember his last match it might have been Bournemouth um, away, and I remember that that day he came in for a lot of stick from our fans, but I, I thought he played well, um, and I think that that was the game where he could have got sent off. He was he was very lucky not to have. But um, it's interesting. Um, I've said it before how, how football fans can be quite fickle. Um, one minute uh-huh. you know, on a player's back, the next minute player's injured, said player is, is is out with an injury, and and we're apparently missing him. So, um, but I. I I think that he he offers something different, and it will be good to have him back. If we if we're winning, as you say, David, we won't miss him as much. Um, right. So we've got Chelsea next, but before we talk about that, and then what, and then Villa in the cup. Um, just looking at the table. So as it stands, um, we are. Um, I did have a. We're third in the table. So just doing a comparison with, with the last season. So this time last season, after 19 matches, halfway point, we were fourth in the table um, and we had 35 points. This season, we have 39 points after 19 matches. So that's four points better off. And we're third in the table rather than fourth. Although um, that might not... We, we might end up in fourth because at the moment there's a... Um, a match between a, a right old South London derby between Crystal Palace and and um, Woolwich going on, and um, should Woolwich win that match, we'll we'll slip to fourth, which would put us in the exact same position we were last season. If they fail to win that game, which is plausible given that um, Big Fat Sam is in charge of um, West Ham now, oh, West Ham Palace even, <laughs> and they are. Um, they are looking to stay up and I'm sure that sooner rather than later he's going to start to work his his, his, his magic and they're going to be a difficult proposition to break down as all Sam Allardyce teams tend to be so that you know that could end, end up in a draw and we could be third but remain third but yeah um, 39 points four points better off than last season third as it stands might drop back to fourth same as last season um, f- 37 goals scored 14 conceded Goal difference of plus 23. Compare that to last season, 33 scored, 15 conceded. Goal difference of 18. So better in that respect. Um, the big difference is obviously last season, um, at this time last season, you had Leicester, Arsenal and Leicester who were top with 39 points. So there was only a four-point gap between us and the and us and the leaders. It's now 10. So um, and actually 39 points. <laughs> This, this time last season that would have been that we've got now would be sufficient for us to be top but um, as it stands it's not Chelsea are way ahead 10 points and everybody goes on about how it, all the other teams have, have improved and that's true but I would argue that Chelsea compared to Leicester that they're, they're they are um, you know far clearly in a far better position than, than, than um, Leicester City were this time last season but in comparison to the teams that are second we're not any different from last season. So we're four points behind Liverpool at, at the moment in third. Um, last season we were four points at the drift of second. So, um, and that's all without 
Toby for quite a few games. Kane, Moussa Dembele. We're not doing too badly. And we are, these last few matches, I know the opposition is who it's been, but we are showing signs of putting some form together and players coming back. Um, it, it does look encouraging going forward and, and particularly going into that Chelsea match. What, the one thing is, see, what we have missing was actually the spine of the Spurs side. Um, and I always really try and promote that spine. You know, that, that's any winning side has that strength down the centre. Um, and that's what we've had missing, and, and we've had to cope with that. Um, and that's, again, we're going to back to Lamella and some of these draws we've had. Um, and I know a lot of people got frustrated, and I could see it, um, thinking that we've thrown away points. And, and it felt, at times I agree, there was a, a you know, I think about a third draw. It started to feel like... I, we're just not gonna. We, we just weren't create. That's the point. We weren't creating anything. Mm. But you're right. The reality is that we have improved. We have moved on. We didn't suffer many injuries last season, and certainly not in the key areas um, that we suffered. We knew that was going to happen. We've all been panicking last year. If Kane got injured, where were we going to go? Um, when Kane first dropped out, Son came in, did a job for a couple of games, and looked brilliant. And we all looking. Said, well, that's fine. We're covered. Then they worked out that Son couldn't play um, with his back to goal very well, so they made sure that's what he had to do. So we had to find a plan B. And, and that's when we started to sort of misfire and not really create anything. So we've done very well. We have moved on. We are a better side this season than they were last year, in my mind. I've no doubt about it. But, yep, the others have definitely pushed on. Liverpool have pushed on. We're playing similarly to Liverpool when you're saying, Did we, are we playing a back three? Well, sometimes it's difficult to tell. That's the idea that, that keeps the other team guessing when you keep moving the players. Rose today moved from left back actually to right side of midfield at one stage. And, and he stayed there. It's not as though he made one run and then scampered back. He stayed there and was hovering around the edge of the box, making it very, very difficult for another side to work out um, who to pick up. Um, and, and I think that's a, a, that was a great improvement for us. So, yeah, we, we pushed on. But, uh, I don't know what you think, John. I think we've learned lessons from last season. Uh, the, to, the teams ha- around us were hardly going to be any were, were gonna, hardly going to be as bad as they were last season. They were always going to step up. Conte coming in, Mourinho. They they couldn't take another season the way they were, so they had to. Klopp was always going to push Liverpool on a bit, and you know they looked like they could score for fun, but their defence looks a bit shaky. We. Mm learn from the games we had last season and I think yeah we've had suspensions we've had injuries and I think we've managed that situation well and we've come through the other side and now we is the time for us to to push on and you know the, the lovely run of games we've had where we've won three or four on the spin lots of goals going in gives all of the team a lot of confidence that we're playing well and can create which we need to you know take on and push forward uh, Chelsea Wednesday is going to be a massive test for us. Massive test. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not as confident as we as I was when we played Man City, and uh, it, but it's going to be a difficult, difficult game. All of them need to be on, you know, the the best they can. Um, but it 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 should be a positive result for us. So I was going to. Draw you into a prediction, gentlemen. Um, a win, a narrow win for me. Two, two, one. I think that's funny. That's a score I was going for as well. I know it's a little bit hard, but I, I, I certainly don't think anything. I don't see anything with Chelsea to absolutely fear. I know Costa's playing well. Hazard mm. is always a danger. Really is. Yep. And he, you know, he was the one that cost us to the two all last year um, with a stunning goal. But um, overall, I don't see very much to uh, to really worry us. Um, uh, previous seasons, I would have definitely said, you know, oh, I don't see how we're going to get a result. But this year, yeah, I, 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 we're a match for anybody. Absolute match for anybody. And yeah, I think we might say, by heart lane, with the crowd behind us, 2-1. We had them on the ropes for almost 45 minutes or 44 minutes or whatever it was um, at Stamford Bridge and, they, Bridge. and they offered very little. Um, mm. I, 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 different, uh, different side, and they've got Kante in the side now, who you know who, who could have predicted he'd be as good as he is. 
No, I meant uh, I, I meant back in whenever it oh, was right, okay. Sorry. Um, uh, November. Yes, um, yes, yes. When we're winning did one we, nil. Did we we kind of turned a corner then because we that was the before that we weren't really creating much and that game I think everybody stepped up and we did look a lot more fluid going forward. Yeah, yeah, particularly um, in the first half. Second half, I think they they were the better team, but yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's going to a big, like I say, big test, and let's let's bring it on. Um, I think we're going to win that three one, um, and I think that we do we we you know we do have a tendency to raise our game apart from actually United away. Um, we, we do raise our game against um, against um, the, the teams in, in and around us, and I think. As, as you said, David, with with a crowd behind us, I, f- I think we can we can win that. I'm going for three one. It'd be nice to put an end to their run, close the lead to seven points, and um, we might not change our position in in the table. We might still be fourth, by the way, because Arsenal have just scored Giroud, unfortunately. Um, but you know we need to win these matches. If even if other teams are winning around us, and then and we need to win as well. Just even if it just consolidates our position um, and. And then hopefully, when they do slip up, we can be ready to um, pounce. But I think everyone goes on about Chelsea and and how well they've done this season. And yes, they've shown championship form, but I, I don't think I think there's still a lot of football to be played. Um, and I don't think it's a foregone conclusion, as many a uh, many other pundits are saying. I, I can I can see Chelsea dropping points. I think. Um, no. Conte record right? was he with Juventus before he went yeah. to it, it, he went, they'd go on a, a run and then lose several on the bounce and then go on a little run and lose several on the bounce I think they were very patchy under him so the Chelsea side could well be the same um, but I'm, I'm looking at the 10 point gap and thinking can I see a 10 point turnaround to them to us but if there is a 10 point turnaround you know Liverpool and Arsenal unfortunately are going to be in that mix so it's it, yeah, a lot of football to be played which yeah. is why Wednesday is so crucial because yeah. that three points if we can get three points off them that could start a little poor run for them and it's good good for the rest of the Premiership as well not that I care about the rest of the Premiership but if we've got any thoughts any thoughts of catching them we have to take not just one but three points off them on Wednesday it's um again drawing parallels with, with the last season at the I think the twentieth match of last season was was Everton um, away which we drew so if this is is the equivalent if you like game twentieth fixture if we if we draw that okay it's not too bad um, but I'd I'd rather we win because that would um, that would be an improvement on last season but also actually forgetting where it is in terms of game 20 um, whenever we played Leicester City last season at home which was Jan- January but it must have been I don't know, game 21 or game 22 something like that if you draw parallels between Leicester City and Chelsea we lost that game and the gap widened at the time if we win this that again that would be an improvement on on, la- on last season um, in a sort of equivalent type fixture um, and this is this <sighs> This period of time, this time last season, we were winning a lot of games and put, putting a, a, a run together. If we can do that now, we're going to we'll be in a good position, I think, come come the end of Feb, March, as we as we found ourselves selves, um, last season. Um, question from Paul Esau: Due to Chelsea's form, it's fair to say we're up against it in some respect. So, if they have the better of us, would the panel want to see Battle of the Bridge Part Two just for the sheer hell of it? <laughs> I, that after, that after that game, I'd never felt prouder of a Spurs side. I've probably waited all my Spurs supporting life to see a, a team stand up and be be counted like they were. They they didn't give any quarter to them, and uh, I, 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 you know they didn't bottle it. They didn't pull out. They were all, all at it, all at it. Um, I, I've just kicked lumps out of them anyway. It doesn't have to be a battle of the bridge. It'll be the war at the lane. Have them, have them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they, they, I mean, Chelsea seem to. I don't, I, I don't really understand why they suddenly this decide. When I was a kid, Chelsea were no more than Fulham. Fulham were their um, derby, and and we used to, I, I used to cheer on. I remember 
1970, the FA Cup final, we cheered Chelsea on to beat the mighty Leeds. Only little Chelsea. And suddenly, you know, from, from nearly losing Stamford Bridge, and they don't even own it, um, they suddenly become this super side with all this money in. And all those players last year just didn't perform for their manager or, for, more importantly, for their money. I mean, if that was Spurs players doing what their players, I would be beside myself with rage. I don't normally throw verbal abuse if I'm at the ground, but if they were playing like Chelsea's players, I would be. Um, and then one game, they decide to turn up and, and, and kissing the badge at the end of it. Really? They didn't cost us the league. Um, Leicester did that on their own. That they, they took that. We, we lost that by well, 11 points. We were behind them in the yeah. end, but they won it by 10 points. They, they, they took four off of us. Um, and uh, that, that was the end of that. So, so I was quite pleased in the end. I looked at it and I thought, well, you know what? That was quite worthwhile. Dyer slamming into Fabregas and I loved all that. Um, but I'm hoping this time that we use our heads um, and take three points off them. I know a battle would be nice, but not if Chelsea go and end up with at least a draw or more. I'd, I'd, I'd rather see us take the points and end up with a battle. Well, two years ago today, we beat them 5-3 at, at the lane. Um, so we've done it before, and, and we can do it again. Um, got, I've got no, no doubt about that. Um, after that match, we've got Villa in the Cup a week today. Third round of the Cup at the lane. We should beat them, shouldn't we? We will beat them. don't think there's any doubt in that. We will beat them. Um, it, one of the things I'd like to see from us in this season is to have a nice, nice Cup run. And I think you know we've got a side to do it, so let's let's see let's let's get to a final. Let's get into that final. This you know we can beat teams easily, and Villa I don't think are going to be any different on the day. Yeah, I, 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 they're a resurgent Villa under uh, Steve Bruce, no doubt. But I don't think he's going to take um, the FA Cup too seriously. I think he'll make changes. Uh, I think we'll make changes undoubtedly, but. Um, Based on today, with the likes of Trippier coming in and probably Davis, um, I don't see that we'll put in less of a shift than we would do with a, our first uh, 11 on that sheet. So I think we'll beat them. And I said already uh, last week, I've got a sneaky feeling it could be our um, our year, especially as the Chinese, I think it's the Chinese year of the cockerel. Yes. Yep. 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 So um, <laughs> I saw someone put, uh, so maybe it's our year again. I've got a feeling it might be. Let's hope so. Um, right, um, just a few announcements. So no Spurs ladies update this week. Um, Spurs ladies are taking a well-earned break. Um, they return next Sunday, Sunday the 8th of January, when they play in the Women's FA Cup second round against Gilling Gillingham ladies at Chessant FC. Kick-off is at 1 o'clock. Um, so if, you, if, if you're if you at loose end and you're able to, to go and watch the Spurs ladies, then I would strongly recommend you do. There's no... Obviously, uh, um, Spurs team don't play till four o'clock, I think, later on in that afternoon against Villa. Plus, we're going to beat Villa anyway. It's a foregone conclusion, so don't bother watching Spurs. Just go and watch Spurs ladies. Um, uh, I think it's it might be five a entrance, something like that. If that um, get behind the Spurs ladies. Um, also, what's the other thing? Um, we've now got the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast has got its own YouTube channel. So if you if you search for Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast um, under YouTube, you will find um, links to all the podcast episodes, um, all three seasons. We're in the third season now um, on YouTube. You'll also find a section where there are videos, um, sort of fans' videos um, from matches. Um, and uh, just sort of capturing, you know, the atmosphere uh, at games, whether that be at, whether that be at the lane or, or away from home, singing, chants, that sort of thing. So check us out, um, Top Moth Family Podcast on YouTube. Um, if you want to send us questions, you can do via Twitter. The Twitter handle is at thf podcast. Um, you can also follow us or send us questions via the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast Facebook page, or you can email us spurs at the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast.com. Right, let's finish off with some questions. Um, at Lee Master 81 asks, Do you think our fans' constant negativity is making us sound like the Woolwich? Never. We're nothing like them. Um, we're all, like you said, we're always going to be labelled as fickle because if a player's out, 
we're missing him if he's in he's rubbish and he needs to be rested but we're nothing like them absolutely nothing like them that you know it's silent at the emirates i could, even though apparently they've just scored i bet it's silent there they're they're and all the the one thing i remind everybody i've heard this somewhere else if it wasn't for them moving to north london all of those arsenal fans would be tottenham fans the lot of them they would be supporting Tottenham. So if anything, they want to be us and they're never going to have what we have. You know what? I'd never thought of it in those terms. Yep. They, they, would, all, they, <laughs> would, all be, they would all be Tottenham fans. They wouldn't be Arsenal fans. The lot of them. They just want to be Spurs fans. It's quite interesting their journey um, of the last um, 20 years with Wenger. Um, he's done remarkable things with the club uh, financially with the team he came in with a great back five um, the English back five which was already well drilled by the well, not Bruce Rioch but the manager before uh, George Graham um, and all he did was bring in the World Cup trio um, which made them into a remarkable side but if you look at Arsenal's uh, fans point of view what they've seen is that side go down and down and down slowly and all this joke about they've got top four the hit again but they've not really achieved. They've had two FA Cups recently and they've got an awful lot to moan about. And, and they're, seeing, they're seeing the emergence of us at the moment with our new ground even better than theirs. And I hope that the ground, when we go in there, um, we've learned something from their ground that um, we need the atmosphere. We need to keep that place rocking again. That's, that's absolutely mm. essential. Um, and, and they have got something to moan about and I can understand why they're just looking at um, all their doing is treading water at the moment and that is all they're doing even last season they got second but who remembers I, I think the, the, the biggest thing that that French arsehole ever did was fooling the world into thinking fourth place was as good as a cup mm. uh, and that's what you can take from it going back to you said about moving into the new stadium that transition I think the the trust has got uh, hopefully a, a big part to play in ensuring that the people who are together now remain together and are moved into our lovely cop end of 17,000 people so they're all in one space I think where you've what has happened with the uh, the, the, the Canning Town Bingo Club where they've moved to the, the London Stadium is um, people who have been sat together for years and years are now far apart and they've lost that togetherness that they had and I think that the trust needs to, to work hard with the club and ensure that the people on the shelf and in the park lane are, are, are sat in the same areas to keep that core and that atmosphere. Um, you know, it, 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 it may be difficult, but, you know, I've, I've, been, I've been in um, the, the, the Paxton end and it's like being on the set of Cocoon. It's just, it's quiet and it's full of old people. And if they're the majority of the people that go into that cop end, there's going to be no atmosphere. So they need, we need to ensure that the, the, the noisy bastards at the, at the club stay together yeah that, that's crucial um just on um interesting you mentioned david about um about arsenal fans and having something to, to to moan about i mean in one sense it's what what's what wenger's done over a long period of time and like making sure that they always finish in, in in the top four at one level that's 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 good but they haven't really pushed on that's and I think that's that's obviously where the, where, where the frustration stems from and, and the other thing is when you go back to when they had the Invincibles team um, ever since that and when which sort of a year or two years after that coincided with them moving out of the library into their new stadium um, they didn't have any money because of the new stadium and they they were having a great deal of difficulty holding on to their assets. So if it wasn't Vieira, it was Fabregas or, or um, uh, the guy's name escapes me. The one whose Twitter account got hacked the other day, Nasri. Nasri. Um, that, that was quite. Yeah, that was quite funny. Um, and um, they couldn't hold on to these players. One of the things that what's been noticeable um, and under Levy the last few years is. He's tying down all of our assets to long-term contracts, and I don't buy assets. I don't. I mean exactly that. I don't mean the star, just the star assets. I mean everybody. So even somebody like we 
briefly touched on earlier, Tom Carroll, who's not been featuring that much. He's tied him down to a long-term contract such that if somebody comes in for him during this window, they'll have to pay a decent amount of money. Um, so I think that hopefully, and plus from what I understand, the new stadium, um, the way that's been designed and the thought that's gone through into that, it's um, well, we will hopefully learn the lessons from, from that other team and, and the atmosphere will be a lot less, a lot better and we're hopefully actually building something for the future that's progressive um, and not something that's just sort of consolidating, which, which you know, Wenger has done that top marks to them and that's where a lot of the frustration stem, stems from that they haven't really pushed on um, to go back to the question uh, to answer Lee's question I think all fans are fickle to, all football fans unfortunately to some degree are fickle um, uh, to the point where it can be quite irritating and, and, and nauseating but um, all I would say is um, does he think our fans negatively makes us sound like the Woolwich no um, watch Watch Arsenal TV. That's what you should do. Watch Arsenal TV. Um, and I'm glad to say that I know very few Spurs fans, even the worst, that sound anything like um, the Muppets that appear on Arsenal TV. You get me, fam. You hear me? <laughs> you hear me, blood? You get me, fam? Oh, man. It's, it, that's, people ask me why I watch that. It's glorious after they've had bad results. But my word, there's some mental health problems there. Right, next one. Um, Ed Brandt, um, maintain our current relatively poor performance levels and win games or improve performance without so many wins? Poor performance? How many goals have we scored in the last few games? I think he's probably talking about prior to that. Um, well, you could argue three draws. Yeah. Three draws for three points or lose two and win one. Um, I think I would rather just keep going as we're going. We've been we've been grinding out results, draws, and then we've been turning those draws into wins where we can. So keep as we are. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I'm not going to add anything to that. I agree. Okay, next one. Terry Whitty. Strong reports out over the last few weeks that Barkley is a strong candidate to come to us. Would he be a good signing? And also, Paul Esau, Esau adds, dump the Soko and get in Barkley. Discuss. Now, I I don't see the. I don't understand why Sissoko would, would um, go the other way. Because didn't he turn, turn down Everton in the summer for us? And he didn't just, yeah, did, the, didn't the, just turn them the, down. Yes, it was. It was about the, yeah, about the same money as well, wasn't it? Yeah. It wasn't a case of money, but he chose us. Um, yeah. I've, uh, I've been vocal in my uh, disapproval of Sissoko, but I thought he had a great game against Southampton. Uh, yeah. even, when, even when we were behind, he was a willing and strong runner who helped the team get going. He had some nice passes and it's, uh, you know, he's adapting and he's improving every time he plays. He, I don't think he's ever going to produce that pass that will lock, unlock a defence like we need, but he can show what he can do at pace when he was, when he's running at teams. He did it against Swansea when we were there, Jav. Mm. And, you know, when we're on the break, he he can, he improves his, uh, his skills that way. But I, I wouldn't get rid of him now. I think he's a valuable asset that we can keep on. You know, there's that word again, asset. He, he's somebody that we can use going forward. Yeah, there are signs that he's he's starting to to. I don't want to bring it back to his pr price tag because that, that's that's annoying. But 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 he was a, a performer for France in the Euros certainly, and he was a inconsistent performer for Newcastle. Um, speak to any Newcastle fan and and they'll tell you that um, you know he he, he he sort of blew very hot and cold. But um, we're starting to to see a player there. Um, I just can't see Barkley going the other way because, uh, sorry, I can't see Sissoko going the other way because of um, the fact that a you turn them down, but it was the manner in which he turned them down. I think he kept Kuman hanging and then didn't answer his call. Um, I think that it's not been mentioned, but I think that a more likely or plausible swap would be Tom Carroll going in the other direction and Barkley coming to us. Um, I don't know what you think about Barkley, but I. I, lo I like the look of him a couple of years ago when he emerged on, on the scene. I think he... It's not the same player, but there were shades of Paul Gascoigne about the way he played. And I think he's got ability, but I think he's gone off the boil a bit. And I can't help thinking that under the under the guidance of Maurizio, um, he, he would start to perform and start to fulfil some of that potential. It depends what he's... Um... 
he's wanting. But if he thinks he's going to, he wants to go to another club. I mean, he's he's fallen out with Kuman a bit. Kuman's dropped him because he's not been performing. Uh, and, and left on the bench. He is a little bit unhappy, and whether his agent's now unsettling him and can see a nice little payday if he gets a transfer. Um, but if he thinks he's going to come to a club like Spurs and walk into the side, of course he's not. And this is the interesting one with the fans, and, and, and this was said the other day about buying somebody, and said, well, where's he going to play? Well, of course, that, that, that type of comment can be levelled at any player we buy. Well, where's he going to play? In other words, in truth, we've got a quite a settled side there and one we're quite happy with. If they're all firing and all playing nice, you know, we don't need anybody else. But of course, that's, it, is, it is a squad game. And whether he would, be, he would be happy to come to Spurs and end up sitting on the bench as he was at Everton, then he, uh, he ain't going to come. I, I would take him in a blink of an eye. I, he's another very physical player, which is how Spurs are being built at the moment. And Sissoko, I, I agree with you, John. Sissoko, they are not um, I don't think Spurs are going to get rid of him um, they, they've not seen the best of him yet um, I, I quite like him, he's a real physical attribute should have got sent off against I think it was Southampton with a kung fu kick, but that's how dangerous he is he's very physical and I can see him, the fact that he's been rested for the Chelsea game and I think they're going to play him against Chelsea um, just to hurt Chelsea physically because he, that's what he does and I don't think they'll like him so I don't see, uh, I don't see a swap and, and it would be a I would imagine a straight buy. I don't see Tom Carroll going to Everton. Uh, I'd be surprised. I've got a funny feeling that Swansea will come back in for him. But of course, mm. they haven't got a manager um, at the moment. So who would buy him? I don't know. And would he? Would he? I mean, he was linked with Swansea, but would he go there, given their predicament and given the fact that um, they don't have a manager yet, although they've been linked with um, the chap who's Angelotti's assistant, whose name escapes yeah. me at the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. So here's a question: If if Carol if Carol or Sissoko doesn't go the other way, how much would we have to pay to get Barkley from Everton? Straight cash. Quiet. Quiet. And I don't think that we're going to spring that amount of money in a January transfer window for him. No. I also think that even if we did, which I don't, I don't, would, but um, with somebody else would have to make way. Um, yeah, you, you, the the the, the rumours that Sun was on his way out and uh, at times um, Wimmer was the other one that is rumoured to have gone back to Colne already yeah. but I, I can't see us getting Barkley I really can't no I'd be yeah, surprised the, the only player I can see go, going out out to the January window is Carroll um, yeah because just by virtue of the fact that he's he's not even making the bench now and he's, he's behind Winks in the pecking order and I can't really see if he if he stays at Spurs, I can't see that he'll improve and push on. Um, I think it, for, for his sake alone, he needs to move on somewhere. Yeah, he's, 20, he's 24 now, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's at a crucial stage, isn't he? Can I, can I ask a question? It, do you think Winks is another Carroll slash Bentaleb type player? I can remember Bentaleb being, you know, lauded for his performances and Carroll as well. And they've both dropped by the wayside and, you know, Bentaleb's moved on. Carroll's probably going to move on and now Winks is coming through do you think we're just going to see him in glimpses and then he'll fall by the wayside and get moved on as, again I like Winks I think he's I think he's a tremendous player and when he came on today I thought you know what that's the he keeps the ball and he keeps it well but he's very quick a uh, fleet of foot and I like it uh, um, he reminds me of um, uh, Carrick a little bit of that um, ilk when Carrick was younger I mean Carrick slowed down down a bit but he's still got it all in the head um, he plays a very good game and I see Winks in that respect so I see him a lot better than Carroll um, and I, I see a future for him um, as part of the squad I have to say I think that is he only 19 I believe yeah um, I wow. think that um, I saw him a few years ago in a, in, a, in a youth cup tie and I was impressed with him then and I've been impressed with him every time since I think technically um Okay, so um, who is it? Bentalab and Carroll. Now, Ka Carroll, I think he first featured in the team under AVB against, it might have been Man City um, when we played them at home and Bale scored. I think we won that game 3-1. I think mean, he came on for a cameo, looked good. And Bentalab was, um, this is a bit cruel, but Tim Sherwood, love Charles, Sherwood brought him into the team. Um, neither of those players were players that, 
that Pochettino effectively inherited them, um, whereas Winks is somebody who's emerged more under Pochettino in the same way that sort of Mason had as well, that albeit Mason was a bit older. Um, you can see that Pochettino likes um, Winks, and yeah, technically he's very good on the ball. Um, interesting in the comparison you make, David, with with, with Carrick. I can see that. Um, I read somewhere, I don't know if this was paraphrased or if this was an actual quote, but I think Pochettino had said a few days ago that we, as a club we weren't interested in Morgan Schneiderlin anymore because of the development or the emergence of, of Harry Winks, which says a lot about Winks. And I think that um, I think he will be a squad player at the moment, but in a few years, given, given his age, I think in a few years to come, um, he might be starting regularly. Um, yeah. Bear in mind, he's, he's only 19. Yeah. Okay, final two questions. Um, Richard Healy, who do you think is going to be the surprise Tottenham player of 2017? I'm predicting a big year for, for from Eric Lamella when he comes back. Hopefully he can pick up and, and produce some form. It might take him a couple of games to get into it. Mm. So, you know, oh, he's... We'll probably get the cries of he's rubbish, why, blah, blah, and that will come out again until he can pre- prove his worth again. But Winks, why not Winks? Let's have a let's have a big year from Winks. Um, I think no. you know uh, Marcus Edwards was tipped at the start of the year. He's not getting it. He's been injured, isn't he? Hasn't he? So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, Winks. What? Let's, let's go with Winks. Give the young no. lad a, a go. Another one of no. our own. Not tempted to say Sissoko. No. Nah, you, know, you know you want to. He'll, he'll do what he'll do, and and then I will. Eat, I'm eating humble pie about him already, and I'm quite happy to, to be fair, because um, I didn't see anything from the man. But but I'm I'll, I'll, I'll eat, you know I'll, I'm not going to eat my shirt if he does really really well. But there you go. I'm not going to go that far. My head says Lamella. Actually, I, I think he'll um, push on again if, when he gets to play. And, and you're right, he's going to take a couple of games. I mean, if he was if he was about ready for the Chelsea game, I wouldn't play him. He's not ready for that one. But uh, West Brom, yes, he would be. Um, but I think he's the guy that I'm hoping is going to see like a new signing, really. We've been playing without him when he comes back. Saying that, my heart said oh, I'd love to see Sissoko be one of the players. I think he will emerge um, as a regular, um, and I think he will be a force for Spurs. But Lamella, I think, is the real boy that um, if you're looking for an answer for that, for 2017. <laughs> At the start of the season, I predicted Tottenham would win the league. Um, halfway f- um, into the season, I know we're ten points behind. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna backtrack. Um, and the other thing that I predicted was that Lamella would be player of the um, PFA or Football Writers Player of the Year. I can't see that now, given how many games he's missed and yeah. the fact that he's still not going to be ready. And, and like you both, I think that it will take some while when he does come back in, into the team for him to to make an impact but I think we might see the best of him come March onwards March, April, May um, which which might be you know, if we're still in the mix then which I hope and I think we, we will be um, a, a, a fit Lamella um, at the top of his um, game will, will, will be um, a force to be reckoned with um, and yeah as the other one I suppose if we're looking at the calendar year 2017 I think Winks will push on um, possibly Carter Vickers but he needs opportunity, so at the moment there are a good few centre backs ahead of him that warrant a place um, in the starting lineup. Um, final question from Ed Brad: When the season is over, would you prefer fifth in the league and a cup win, or fourth and no cup? Um, cup. I'd cup. take the cup. A cup. Name on that cup forever. Yep. It's there. Like I said, Veng- Wenger's. Um, Last and legacy would be fooling everybody into thinking fourth is better than the cup when it's not. Give me the cup. Yep. Agreed. Um, well, uh, I think we're going to win the league, of course. Um, but um, to answer Ed's question, um, I would like us to. I would like us to win the, the Europa Cup, and I think we can. And if we do, correct me if I'm wrong. Even if we finish fifth in the league, we'll, we will qualify for the. Um, Champions League. Right. Um, thank you, gents. Thank you, thank you, John. No pleasure. problem. Thank you very much for having me. As always, Jab, it's always a pleasure. No worries. Thank you, David. Yep. Cheers. Pleasure. And a happy New Year to everyone. Again. Yep. Let's go. Yep. And uh, yeah. we shall <laughs> yep. be recording the next podcast a week today, I think, probably. Um, and on that note, as ever, the future's bright, the future's lily white. Good night.